Over the course of the last couple of years, there's been this raging debate across the internet about the idea of console gaming versus PC gaming. Things like the portability of the Nintendo Switch or the power and ease of the PlayStation 5 versus all the different things like mods and crazy graphics that exist only on PC gaming. And to be honest, it's made me more and more curious about the idea of finally building a gaming PC for myself to see all the things that can exist. Exist, but sometimes a port comes out, a PC version of a game that originally existed on console that just ends up pissing off all the fans, which is what we're talking about today. What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here, and I'm a big lover of Final Fantasy VII. The original game is my favorite freaking game of all time, but somehow they've managed to screw up the port of the Final Fantasy VII Remake. Now this has been a very big surprise to me because it seems like a game that was just oozing with power originally. The newest port of it that was actually playable on PS5 called Intergrade is a staggering masterpiece. Like straight up it has 4K graphics, some very solid frame rates, and it managed to do a lot of stuff that made the already very powerful storytelling look even cleaner. Well, they just dropped this and uh, well... It doesn't have a lot of the features that people expected from even a standard thing. Now, there's two separate problems with this. The PC port itself just isn't the best quality, which I want to show you some examples of. And the other half of this is that this is now the most expensive version of the game itself, which has led to... Well, it's led to a lot of piracy. But let's start off by talking about the problems with the port. To start things off in a more technical aspect, this is a tweet by John Linneman. This is actually one of the guys who works over at Digital Foundry. Now, these dudes are literally the textbook writers themselves. They're the people who create the most definitive videos, actually counting the pixels and looking at what is good or bad about a particular version of a game when it's released on different systems. Well, they basically just have been looking at this over the course of the last 24 hours, and they said that it's straight up terrible. What's making people specifically just so incredibly upset is the fact that, well, there's just not a lot of graphic options in general. But more than that, even if you do have a very, very top of the line PC, even if you have spent literally thousands of dollars to make sure that you have the best computer to play these games, it doesn't seem like it actually does that much to make it a better experience. Like straight up, the main thing is the game tries to use this dynamic resolution. So it constantly goes up and down in how good the graphics are and now you can't really do anything about that it just basically makes it where it just kind of chooses how good the graphics are going to be and it does this in a way to try and make the frame rate more solid but it doesn't seem to be very effective at that either now part of the problem comes down to the fact that when Square Enix brought over Final Fantasy 15 to the PC a couple of years back that was a miraculous port it actually had tons of different options which made it truly the definitive version of FF15 like even if you hate Final Fantasy 15. It's cool that there is a version that runs at 120 frames a second in 4K and really looks as sharp as possible. Now, what's funny to me is that one of the main reasons I feel like a lot of people have been curious to play this on the PC is because of the ability to tailor the experience to your tastes. Like, that's why a lot of people like PC gaming, is that you really can build your own custom adventure using their toolkit. But Square Enix, for whatever reason, just did the laziest port possible. Now, the reason I use the word lazy, which is a very strong word, I will admit that, is because of issues like this. So people have been actually uploading these videos that show the fact that there is frame rate drops. Now, you can't quite see it because it's kind of tiny here in the corner, but you can see this choppiness exists. Like, look at this choppiness. It's insane to me. This is being done on a high-end PC. This is a person who spent thousands and thousands of dollars to construct what they have basically intended to be the ultimate gaming platform in this game, which runs great on the PlayStation 5, 
is having problems on the PC. Now, a lot of the anger surrounding this badge port is the fact that this is the most expensive version of the game. Like, keep in mind that this has been released for a year and a half on PlayStation 4, and it still looks good on PlayStation 4 for one third the price. Whereas, if you do want to try and get it on the PlayStation 5, the integrated version on PlayStation 5 has already been going on sale all over the place. You can usually get it for about 40 bucks. And personally, I love the PlayStation 5 version so freaking much. So the fact that people are paying the highest price, which is $70 here in America, sometimes $80 or $120 if you're buying it to New Zealand, it's nuts that this version costs so much when it seemingly lacks a lot of the features that people would expect from even a basic PC port. Now, what's funny to me is that people have been trying to fix this themselves. This is called Nexus Mods. This is sort of like the primary hub that people go to to try and patch and fix things. It's basically fan mods that let you change your experience a little bit, you know, modifications. The number one download, literally the most downloaded one, is Dynamic Resolution Disabler. Essentially removing the stupid thing that makes it where the graphics are constantly scaling up and down. You'll at least have a standard freaking system here to see the experience in the smoothest way possible. Instead of having it randomly go from 1080p to 4K back down to 720p, like it's ridiculous that this system exists. It's a technique that's supposed to exist purely to make it have a standard frame rates, but even with the sacrifices being made, it's still having frame rate problems, which makes me think that whatever they're trying to do under the hood, it's just clearly not working. Now, some of the mods are pretty good. Like the number one reason I've personally been wanting to buy it on PC, I mean, even if it is a bad port, is because of stuff like this. <laughs> the fact that I could play the entire game as Dress Cloud. <laughs> This looks fantastic. Like, straight up, come on, that's pretty funny. Look at the little tiara. Like, this is hysterical. Like, I kind of assumed that the PC port would be the best version of the game because standard, that's the way it goes. Like, normally, there's the console version and then the PC version is this upgrade for the rich gamers, you know? So, like, I kind of thought that eventually I'd pay this great superior version of it that unfortunately just doesn't seem to exist. Now, to me personally, the most fascinating part of this lazy port to me is the fact that people have discovered the fact that even if you do manage to boost the resolution or frame rates and stuff like that, the actual assets stay the same, which means that a lot of times, even if you do make the game itself look in a sharper resolution, the character models exist in the same way, which means that people, even if you do play the game at 4K, it's going to look the same as if somebody's playing it on a base model PlayStation for like cleaner a little bit but the problem is that even if you do just bump it up there's not going to be extra details that you can notice you're not going to suddenly have more extra grooves on cloud sword or more wrinkles and tifa's booba like it's the exact same game that's just boosted up almost artificially this is weird to me because it feels like this could have been an opportunity to do things above and beyond. They really could have gone that distance to make this the pinnacle version of the Final Fantasy VII Remake, especially because now, when you think about it, we're stuck here waiting. As big Final Fantasy fans, we're sort of just sitting here twiddling our thumbs and waiting for new news of Final Fantasy XVI or Final Fantasy VII Remake Part Two. This could have been a nice flagship. This could have been the final sayonara, a chance to look at FF7 Remake in its most perfect fashion while we waited for FF7 Remake Part 2. I wanted to see stuff like low quality mods where people purposely put the original character models back into the game. I wanted to see weird tinkering and experiments to make the game look, play, and be better than it was before, and I guess we're just not going to get that, because Square Enix clearly doesn't care about PC gamers. I'm still going to try and build my own gaming PC relatively soon. I feel like it's going to make it so I can actually render videos faster and edit quicker and stuff like that. But it's disappointing to me whenever I see an expensive version of a game not run its best. But I guess that's why it's all over the piracy sites right now. But what do you think? Have you had a chance to play the Final Fantasy VII Remake? Do you appreciate the game for what it is? Or do you wish that they had gone just a bit further with this project? Tell me your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a giant thumbs up, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But do me the biggest favor of all, and keep dreaming.
If you haven't already, by the way, please go watch my video talking about the best games of 2021. That was a very fun video to write, and I feel like there's some games in there that you might have missed. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last, or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.